India, the country that holds the beautiful Taj Mahal, one of the greatest architectural landmarks of all time. The country with 24 constitutionally recognized different languages. The country that birthed Hinduism and Buddhism, the third and fourth largest religions in the world. The country that made naan, butter chicken, dosa, samosa, and jalebi. The country that had food mouth-watering enough to make foreigners sail across the world. The country of Bollywood, which produces more than 1,000 films every year. The country that celebrates the Wali, the beautiful festival of lights. As you can see, India is a country that is full of expression, culture, and innovation. Unfortunately, American media does not show the side of India. Indians are primarily shown to be exploitive, overly frugal, awkward, and grades-oriented. Represented everywhere from kids' TV shows to adult comedy, the Indian personalities in the media have been responsible for changing my view of myself and for changing others' view of me. While one may think that all racial stereotypes shown in the media always negatively affect the race involved, this is not true. Because of Indian stereotypes of intelligence, academic accomplishment, and hard work, Indians are actually given similar privileges as white people by society. I personally have never been verbally abused because of my race, and I've gotten good employment opportunities that I probably wouldn't have gotten if I was a member of another American minority. That being said, a single story is being told about my race when there are multitudes more that need to be told, making me feel one-dimensional and making people view me as one-dimensional. There are obviously negative consequences to this. Let's explore them by doing an analysis on the following clips and how they affect Indians in America. And now, the band you've all been waiting for... The Balgeetles! Hey, cool beat, Buford. Uh, thanks? What's up, Balgy? Your band is waiting for you on stage. I can't do it! I just do not know how to rock! I know I'm going to get a bad grade! Wait, what are you talking about, grades? This is summer rocks! There are no grades! No grades? Oh, so it is pass-fail? No. We use a free-floating curriculum to encourage kids to just rock out and have fun. I do not believe this! I wasted all this time in a class without grades! Oh! If only there was some other kind of outlet for me to express these feelings to my like-minded peer group! Bauchi, an Indian character in the program, is portrayed as an extremely great-oriented student. In the cartoon series, Bauchi is shown as one of the smartest kids in his school. Nevertheless, he has social problems and requires help for it. Now the view that is formed of us, the Indian community, is that they are not social, they are unadventurous, and they have problems expressing themselves. We are assumed to be utilitarian individualists rather than expressive individualists. Not only have I faced it myself, but I have also assumed it for my identity. Now let's talk about the other end of the stereotype, while considering the character Apu from The Simpsons. Hey, hey, you're Apu Nahasapima Petalon, aren't you? I mean, you're the, God, you're, you're like the guy, you're a legend around here. Can I ask you, is it true you once worked 96 hours straight? Oh, yes, it was horrible, I tell you. By the end, I thought I was a hummingbird of some kind. Oh, yeah, you know, I studied your old security tapes. Apu is shown as a person working at a convenience store. Fine, perfect. But he has no other prospects in life. He's shown working like a robot, just for money, and is extremely frugal. He has no expressionism, which is an essential part of American community. Thanks to... The, thanks to its 30-year-long legacy, The Simpsons representing Abu tells how America has viewed Southeast Asians, especially from India. Historically, Abu was the only character on media representing Indian, and him being not able to express himself led to other Indi Americans believing it, hence leading to problems of inclusion in the American community. Now, Abu is funny, but he is funny because he's other. 
It's his accent, mispronunciations, and lack of American talent that makes him funny, but not the humor of himself that makes him funny. Now let's have a look at a clip from Big Ben Theory. Solution. What does that mean? <sighs> oh, I know. For most of my life, I got so nervous around women that I couldn't talk to them without alcohol. So you've been drunk every time we've seen each other? No, no, it hasn't happened in a long time. And I really thought I was over it. But I guess... I don't know. I guess I, I wanted so much for tonight to go well that I... I stressed myself out. It came back. Why didn't you tell me about this before? I was embarrassed. I get that. If it makes you feel any better. Now moving on to the Big Bang Theory. Raj, an Indian character in this clip, is portrayed as socially incompetent in talking to girls. This is another aspect of the problem of expressionism for Indians that is shown in American media. The other clip again tells the American audience that Indians are awkward in letting out their emotions, which they clearly aren't. Again, in the Big Bang Theory, Raj was funny because of his accent, because of the people's ignorance to him due to his race, because of his traditions, etc., etc., but not because of his sense of humor. In general, the Indian characters on American social media having of faking Indian accents only do that to take a jab on. This potentially forces me to judge and change my accent because otherwise I would be a joke in social setting. Also, people unconsciously assume I am smart and when they find out I am not, they judge my identity. When I am extremely social, they assume it's because of the social circle that I have had in past and not because of my inherent ability. And this has happened to me. To conclude, there are countless ways the American media and the stereotypes of Indians have affected me. Dominant narrative for Indians in American media is a male Indian of lower or middle class who is extremely smart but socially stiff and works in a software field, research area or owns a convenience store. Thanks to this dominant narrative, we face structural discrimination, but it is in positive light. We are given opportunities in so software companies which we otherwise would not. Since Indians weren't there for the majority of countries' existence, whatever people assumed of us was what the media fed to them. Due to the dominant narrative, we are forced to be smart, uptight in social settings, great at mathematics, etc. Anyway. What the American media requires is the counter-narratives of us. American media lacks the representation of Indian women in it. Not only that, but also the LGBT community of India. This makes it especially hard for the Indian LGBTQ people to come out in public regarding their sexuality. To be honest, there are not many representations of Indians in American media. Due to the limited representation of ourselves in media, we, the Indians, face internal racism. We believe in stereotypes such as we are smart, socially awkward, etc., which negatively affects our identity. And they think and you're an astrophysicist. They too. think I'm an astro. Yeah, they think I'm smart in real life, but you know, unfortunately, <laughs> that's not the case. But you do.